You may remember I've already made a video like this, but you guys seem to really enjoy it, so I decided to make a part two and just dig a little deeper and find even more interesting islands that no one is willing to buy. And here it is. Now, at some point in our lives, many of us have probably dreamt about getting away from the struggles of work and society and the rat race and dreamt about living on a beautiful paradise secluded island. But then we've realized they cost millions and millions, so that dream remains a dream. Well, there is still hope. You don't have to be super rich to buy your very own tropical island. There are many out there that are affordable, as long as you don't mind putting up with a few drawbacks. And to be fair, in some cases, they're massive drawbacks. These range from an island that's so cheap it's basically free, but it was used as an anthrax test site, to another that's so far out to sea, storms have killed every inhabitant it's ever had. So let's jump right in and take a look at five islands no one wants to buy for any price. Greenard Island is a small scenic Scottish island that's 2 kilometers in length and 0.6 kilometers wide and 1.1 kilometers from the coast. And it was sold in 1990 for 500 British pounds and placed up for sale more recently, but no one wanted to buy it, so it's taken off the market. You may be thinking, 500 pounds is a super low price. I'd buy it for that price just to say I own it and never step foot on it. But trust me, you really, really don't want this. It's absolutely useless. No, really, there's a reason it's been uninhabited for nearly a hundred years. That reason is because the British Army used this place for biological warfare testing. And on one occasion, they took eight sheep to the island and set off a load of anthrax bombs that were designed to pollute German cities and render them uninhabitable. The test was successful. The sheep died and the island was indeed rendered uninhabitable. Now in 1986, the government decided it was time to clean up their mess, and they started Operation Dark Harvest, a large-scale operation set up to decontaminate the island. They sprayed 280 tons of formaldehyde solution diluted in seawater all over the island, and then they declared it fit for habitation by man and beast, and it seemed like it worked. They placed a new flock of sheep there, and they didn't die. And since then, there hasn't been a single trace of anthrax found there, but still, that reassurance just wasn't enough. It's still seen in the eyes of many as a risk that's absolutely not worth taking. And I honestly think they'd struggle to give this island away for free. I mean, who would want to live on an ex-anthrax infested island? But hey, if you wanted to, you'd just have to offer the current owners a little bit over £500. And I'm quite sure they'd be very eager to sell it. Getters Island, Pennsylvania. This huge six acre island is located in the Delaware River. It has no infrastructure, and it's just a short canoe ride to local shops and services, and it's priced at a ridiculously cheap $150,000, but so far not a single person has been willing to buy it. 150k is an insanely low price for a private island of this size. You'd be isolated, peaceful, and alone with your thoughts. But there is a downside. Your friends and family would probably be too terrified to come visit you. That's because it's widely known as one of the most haunted places in Pennsylvania. And I know from my last video, a lot of you said things like, imagine not buying a place because of ghosts, or ghosts aren't real. Now I see your point, but I guess it just boils down to preference. Whilst it may seem silly, some people do believe in ghosts and do respect curses. And a lot of people don't want to bring up a family in a home surrounded by death. And death is exactly what happened on this island. It gets its name, Getter's Island, from a convicted murderer, Charles Getter, who was hanged here for strangling a woman in 1833, and over 20,000 locals gathered on this island to watch him die. Since then, there has been countless reports of supernatural phenomena on this island. People claim to have seen the ghost of Getter and his victim dressed in a long dark gown on many occasions, but it's not clear if this is the ultimate reason why not a single person has been interested in buying this island. Maybe there's something else that developers see that we don't, that renders the land useless and unusable and not worth the money. Linga is a 64 acre Scottish island northeast of Scotland that's surrounded by the rugged beauty of the North Sea and an abundance of wildlife. And it's up for sale for 200,000 pounds. But in four years, not a single person has shown any interest in buying it. Now that to me seems absolutely unbelievable. Just look at the size of this island. It takes half an hour to walk from one side to the other and it comes with three properties. Granted, they are run down, but this is still an insane bargain. 200K would barely buy you a one bedroom flat in some parts of Britain. It could be because no one has lived there for over 80 years and it has no running water or electricity, but it is close to a local village that does have some services, which makes living on this island quite possible. It would be very, very basic, but it's doable. The island does come with building permission to install septic tanks and a rainwater capture system for drinking water. 
but still, maybe even that's too basic. I guess people do buy private islands to get away from it all and lead a simple, quiet life. But I guess this island is just a little bit too simple and too basic. If you remember in my last video, I added a bonus paradise island called Pitcairn that would give you a plot of land to live there absolutely free to boost its population. You can't buy it, they just give you a piece for free. It's true, you wouldn't have to spend a single penny. Well, this next one is a bit like that. Matsukia is a 460 acre island in Tasmania, Australia, and it's surrounded with jaw-dropping natural beauty. And the government will let you live here for half a year for free in a four bedroom house with a vegetable garden. But it comes with a few conditions. Firstly, you can only apply if you have a partner and you're both willing to go. Secondly, you have to maintain the island and the wildlife. And third, you'd be responsible for daily weather observations. And finally, you are not allowed to leave the island. To be honest, that sounds like a pretty sweet deal to me. However, if you're thinking about doing it, you should bear in mind that there's no TV, no internet and no means of contacting the outside world. But I'm sure that wouldn't be a problem to anyone looking to escape the stresses of everyday life. And if you're interested, you can sign up through Tasmania's Park and Wildlife Services website. Tillamook Rock, also known as Terrible Tilly. It's a small island with a lighthouse just off the coast of Oregon that was originally bought for $50,000, but it's since been on the market countless times. But each time it fails to sell and has since been abandoned and forgotten. One of the reasons why no one wants to buy this is the price. They're asking $1.2 million, which is a hell of a lot for a place that would need special permission to do any maintenance on the lighthouse, as there are restrictions in place because it's now a bird sanctuary. So that immediately puts off developers. Another reason is because the weather is so bad out there. It's killed numerous lightkeepers, hence the name Terrible Tilly. On one occasion, the waves came so high, they washed over the whole lighthouse and swept the keeper out to sea. Then a replacement was sent, but he didn't even manage to step a single foot on the island. A wave knocked him off his boat whilst he was mooring, and he disappeared into the sea, never to be seen again. So yeah, that deters anyone wanting to buy this place as a private holiday retreat. So all of this, along with access to the island being pretty much non-existent, this makes it incredibly overpriced with no one willing to buy it. And I imagine not many people would buy it, even for the original sale price of $50,000.